I mean, it's only me hundredth episode. Your hundredth? Oh, congratulations. Hey. Wait, this is another crossover, isn't it? Well, I like crossovers. I get to work with lots of lovely people. And introduce my audience to new and exciting faces. But I think I'll keep it small this time. Okay, so you want me? I can do that. Who else did you have in mind? Hey, you weren't planning on doing this without me, were you? Mr. Edward. Well, seeing as I'm devoid of $10 patrons, you'll make a great addition. <laughs> $10? Yikes! Uh, I mean, um, let's rock! Welcome, welcome, esteemed viewers, one and all. I'm Funky Monkey. And I'm Sir Samursa. And I'm Edward. Thanks for clicking on us. Welcome to my house of love. And further to this, welcome to my 100th episode. <laughs> ah, 100 episodes. A rather special occasion indeed. I had considered another heady goblet of Sid, but my metal cohorts have somewhat gone to ground of late. So instead, let's review a superhero classic that falls outside of the big two. Released in 2004, The Incredibles is the tale of the superpowered Par family and their efforts to blend in with a society that rejected superheroes. But a ghost of the past might reignite the passion for incredible action, when an overzealous fan takes his tech abilities a little too far. I give you the 100th house of love, The Incredibles! Behold the magnificent Mr. Incredible! Incredible, you say? Ah, yes. Then let us flash back about 15 years. The flashback, it goeth thusly. Mr. Incredible, mighty battler of wrongdoers, was idolised by one Buddy Pine. So much so that child tech prodigy Pine wanted to fight by his idol's side, hence, Incrediboy. Which is precisely as dangerous and backfiery as it sounds. So many lawsuits. Ah, lawsuits. <clears throat> I've been there. Cut to 15 years later, and all is not well. So yeah, Mr. Incredible works for an insurance company. He married Elastigirl, and they have three lovely kids. Violet, Dashiell, or Dash for short, and Jack-Jack. But the ordinary life of Bob Parr is maddeningly sub-par for our hero. And so, along with former cohort Frozone, Mr. Incredible secretly seeks adventure. Which goes about as well as you'd expect. You mean they actually save a load of people and usher in a new era of superdom? You have rather high expectations. And though they do manage to save a load of people, it's in evacuating those people that they take a bit of a wrong turn. A wrong turn that leads them into a jewellery store. And it's only Frozone's quick thinking that saves them. 
Well, it's lucky then that a mysterious woman has an interest in our hero. An interest which leads to a tropical island. And an encounter with the Omnidroid. Which goes as well as I'd expect. And then, a flirty dinner. Followed by a montage of Mr. Incredible getting his groove back. So to speak. And then Helen, Mrs. Parr, the former Elastigirl, begins to suspect incredible infidelity. There's only one place to go, the House of Mode. Edna Mode, I remember her. Did a lovely job on my Union Flag One piece. Oh yeah, she's brilliant. Picky I never used the stealth suit she made for me, but I know a guy who does. Mr. Incredible finally meets his employer. Buddy Pine. What? Buddy Pine the tech prodigy? Buddy Pine the super genius? Buddy Pine the, who idolized Mr. Incredible? But... Oh boy. Oh boy is right. Because Syndrome, as Pine is now known, has been trialing his Omnidroid against many other heroes. But oh dear, Helen's need to know causes further problems. She goes to investigate. But Dash and Violet stole away. But Syndrome destroys their plane. Leaving them stranded in the ocean. Or so he thinks. And so, leaving the kids behind, Mrs. Incredible investigates. But the Omnidroid rocket is launched and on course for civilization. And worse, come the morning, the kids have been spotted. Luckily, that's all the distraction needed to free Mr. Incredible. So bam! Massive action! 100 mile dash! Super family heroics! And then Syndrome has to go and ruin it. Super villains. Tell me about it. Syndrome's Omnidroid project was merely a front so that he could reintroduce superheroism into popular consciousness. And while Syndrome goes off to make the world a little more dangerous, Bob Parr comes around. And with a little help from their friend, enter our heroes to save the day. Now, Syndrome controls the Omnidroid via a wrist remote. Unfortunately, the Omnidroid AI figures out where it's being controlled from and takes the wrist remote out of the picture, and Syndrome along with it. Honestly, Syndrome should have just applied to the Legion training program. He'd have worked out his demons in a much healthier way. And it all comes down to the wrist remote. Honestly, if you're going to build an intelligent robot, make sure it knows who the boss is. And a million to one shot from the man himself. But Syndrome won't be denied, and snags baby Jack-Jack for a consolation prize. Which goes... Shockingly badly. Oh! Nasty! And so our movie ends with Dash taking up athletics, Violet acquiring a boyfriend, and the rise of the Underminer? A hero's work is never done, it seems. Anyway, that was The Incredibles. Opinions, then. Who'd like to start? I'm never that keen on domestic dramas, like the family seemingly falling apart, and the husband sneaking off in secret to get his kicks. But the movie was good overall. The domestic part was tolerable. I kind of feel like Bob working with Cargo, or just simply pulling trains if he needed to keep to a low profile, would have been a better job for him from the start. But what family, hero, or world is perfect? I love The Incredibles. It's not my favourite Pixar movie, but I will always watch it if it's on, and I have it on DVD. Samuel L. Jackson in particular tends to steal the show for me, but yeah, it's a really good movie. This is it. Disney Pixar. The pinnacle of family entertainment. And yet, it's a difficult watch for me, not least because it deals with the topic closest to my heart, hiding your light, 
giving up hope and accepting the dreaded realism. I mean, I could go on about why I personally never want to give up hope, that I will make the House of Love a worldwide brand, or at least a moderate success. But that's a rant for another time. On the performance side, Craig Nelson's Mr. Incredible excels as a hero, and has some pathos as the workaday dad, just trying to make the world a better place one insurance policy at a time. Holly Hunter is every inch the tough mom, even if in the wake of her role in Dawn of Justice, I can hear that same senator and just keep thinking of Granny's peach tea. Sarah Val's Violet, for all the moments she actually gets to act, is just the right amount of teenage awkward, and Spencer Fox's every eight-year-old boy, even if he was 11 at the time, and of course we have to mention Samuel L. Jackson's Frozone, who gets all the best lines, and steals most of the scenes he's in. The flow of The Incredibles leads us from a series of faux interviews for the characters, to the day of Mr. Incredible's wedding, the day it all went wrong, to the unfulfilling life of a too big man in a too small world, to the ray of hope that's just too good to be true, to the adventure ride that heralds the return of the supers. And it holds the attention. The pacing isn't rushed or relaxed, but it moves along at just the right pace. Slow when it needs to be, and quick when it needs to be. And the plot? Middle-aged man, seven-year itch, boring life, one last go at excitement, is handled well, with comic touches, and the absurdity of underground superheroes trying to do their best in an ungrateful world that sued them for collateral damage. But the true star here is Pixar's animation, bringing to life a stretchy mom with cougar curves, the fastest eight-year-old alive, the man mountain that is Mr. Incredible, not to mention the impossible cool of Frozone. All in all then, The Incredibles really is, for want of a better word, incredible. And yes, I'm going to put this one into my house of love. So thank you to my co-hosts, Mr. Edward and Miss Ursa. And just because I can, here is another awesome person I'd like to mention. DJ Dave here from Coins and MacGuffin. Subscribe to our Patreon and may the plot always be convenient for you. Also, congratulations, Funky Monkey, on your 100th episode. So for Mr. Edward, Miss Ursa, and Mr. Dave, I've been Funky Monkey, wishing you good days, great entertainment, and 100 episodes. Ah, yes, this channel. Did not know it was still around. Must be that object permanence thing I've heard about. Well, as I live and breathe, Mr. Mad Andy, sir, it has been far too long. Has it? I suppose time has rather outpacerated me, but no matter. After all, what is time to one such as I? Nothing but a simple progression of past to present to future. And with this cameo, I have passed a present to you, and thus the future must follow. That's logic, you see. Of course. <laughs> well, anyway, how are things with you? Oh, things have been up and down and round and round and sideways, backwards and left. My dreams have been as vibrant as ever, but their exhortations to action somewhat muted. And I did witness a not particularly nice fate for a fellow not unsimilar to yourself. Well, that's no way to end my 100th episode. To my audience, then. Thank you for sticking with me through 100 episodes, or clicking on me for the very first time if this is your first house of love. I've been Funky Monkey, wishing you good days, great entertainment, and plenty more fun and frolics in the house of love. So long, folks! Now, Mr. Mad Andy, sir, precisely what was it that you saw in...